Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks and he says, Ma'adawuzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim Allah yatawaffal anfusa hina mawtiha. Allah takes the souls at the time of maut. Maut is death. Walati lam tamut fi manamiha. And those whose souls are not taken when they are awake, Allah takes their souls when they are asleep. For yumsiku allati qada alayha al maut. When he takes your souls while you are asleep, he keeps those souls for whom maut is written. وَيُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى And the rest, he sends them back for a determined period of time. There is an ominous message in this verse of Surah al which surah? Huh? Right, don't be afraid to say it. <laughs> For those who are engaged in oppression, and remember that Allah has zero tolerance for oppression. And riba is oppression. And banking today is oppression. And Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam cursed all four and said that they were all equally guilty. The one who takes riba, the one who gives riba, the one who records the transactions, therefore working in the banks, and the two witnesses. And he said they were all equally guilty. If you die with the curse of the Prophet upon you, wait for the grave. Now, Allah can take your soul. And when he takes your soul, there will be no medical evidence, no scientific evidence that you are still alive. None. So they will think that you are dead. You died in your sleep, for example. And they will give your body the ghusl. And then they will perform the salatul janazah. And your loved ones are the ones who are going to put your body in the grave not knowing that you're not dead. And I, I believe lots of people are dying this way now. I believe that. And when you have been buried, there is no light down there. None. When the last person has reached 40 steps away, then Allah can return the soul as he did it last night for all of you who are here. So you will wake up from your sleep. But when you wake up from your sleep, you, live, you find no light in the room. So you'll call out to your wife, but you get no answer. You attempt to get up. You can't get up. There's no space to get up. So you begin to panic. You begin to feel. You say, but I didn't go to sleep in this clothing. I went to sleep in my saram. What clothing is this? And then you're going to smell the, the camphor with which they bathe, bathe the dead body. And then slowly, slowly, slowly you will realize that you've been buried alive. And they forgot to put a cell phone <laughs> when they buried you. <laughs> and then you're going to cry out and cry out and cry out. But there's no one to hear you. And you will urinate upon yourself and you will defecate in yourself. And the insects are going to crawl over you and you can't do anything about it. You can't call for your banker, you can't call for your chauffeur, you can't call for your Indonesian maid. She's always an Indonesian, incidentally. You can't call for any help. And Allah is now going to punish you with a punishment you richly deserve. Because you had a less than a passing acquaintance with the Quran. You had eyes you could not see. You had ears you could not hear. 
you had hearts you could not understand. It doesn't matter whether you are Christian or Jew or Hindu or Buddhist or Confucian or anything. The same God who created you is the same God who sent the Quran and sent Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. This is the punishment.